yes yes blessings people and it is real talk podcast with ruins a son and myself jay flames and today again you know we always got deep we always got deep conversations well, it's a deep one today this one is a deep one i've been looking forward to this one still. all week when you yeah, bring up the concept yeah. to me last week i was like oh it's a deep one yeah it's a deep one but, and, it's, uh, but it's something i feel like we need to talk about and we need to say yeah because everyone's gonna go through it in life yep you know yep and um yeah today's conversation is about dealing with the death of a parent yes it is you know and um for those that know us personally um we're brothers uh same mother same father and um our mother passed away when i was 19 years old and i was 20 and 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 Aeson was 20 and um kids we were kids yeah <laughs> when i see a 19 year old now and i look back at it i'm like wow was yeah. i was i that small yeah, bro. <laughs> you know? do you know yeah. what i'm saying so um 2006 2006 yeah. so when um Aeson came up with the subject i was thinking to myself okay cool um, i guess we could call it dealing with the death of your mother but then i thought to myself no because a lot of our viewers and a lot of people that i know yeah. personally yeah. have also lost their yeah. fathers as well so that's why uh, today we're going to call this episode dealing with the death of a parent yeah because you know? the pain still hits hard whether it's mum still or, hits hard mum or dad you know what i mean yeah so, so yeah man guess what this episode is going to be about so that's yeah, what it's about let's get man. into it man well let's jump into it so uh me and a son we're a year apart um, at the moment even um, though everyone thinks you're older everyone thinks I'm older because I'm and I like innit? that <laughs> <laughs> yeah we're a year apart and um, at the moment I'm 33 I just turned 33 in uh, July 30th and a son is 34 he turned 34 in April and um, as we said um, we, we tragically lost our mother when I was 19 and a son was 20 and um, when I use the word tragic I do have to just keep it real and be like, it wasn't one of those ones where it was a build up, whether she was sick and, and, and we was expecting her to pass away. It was just she sudden. left. She left one day and said, I'm going out to go meet a friend yeah. and she didn't come back. Literally. <laughs> that's what happened. Yeah. You know, it was a I, crazy day. I, st- I mean, obviously I think about that day every single day. Yeah. Yeah. No, I never, it, 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 like, it never leaves you. It never leaves you, you know, and um. I remember when you said something a few months ago, you was like, you were so happy that you had the chance to say bye to her. Well, for people that know my mum or didn't know my mum, my mum my mom was a very loving woman, you know, very yeah, loving woman, yeah. very intense, you know, where I get the intensity from. But the way my mum was, she wasn't like super affectionate. You know what I mean? So like our relationship wasn't, oh, you know, hugs and everything. But I remember that day because, you know, you know, me and my mum, you, you know how we were, you know. I was so yeah, much like her, yeah. we clashed a lot, you know what I mean? And she always waited the best for me, you mm-hmm, know what I mean? But, mm-hmm. you know, man was young, man was out here, you know. When you're young, you think yeah. you know everything. Exactly, exactly. You know, I think, you know, around that time, that's when I just started uni. And, you know, that was like my mum's dream. I remember when we... me when, in uni. Yeah. When me and our mum dropped you to uni, right? Mm-hmm. And um, we drove you to your halls mm-hmm. up in West London, Westminster Uni you went to, right? Yeah. And I remember that drive back with just me and our mum. Mm. I have never seen her be so sad that you was yeah. gone. Ever. She would have never shown me that. She would have never shown me. <laughs> See, that was our mum, you know. I remember when she was driving, yeah. she just kept saying, oh, my boy. Yeah, yeah, said, my yeah. boy is gone. Yeah, yeah. He's gone. And I was like, wow. Secretly, she was happy that I was gone. But deep down, she was sad because <laughs> was I remember, happy. yeah, I she called me pretty much every day. Yes. Like, yes. just not even just to have a conversation. And, mm-hmm. and it's crazy because... That was her dream for to see me to go to university and you know she passed away literally two months yeah. afterwards you know yeah. was it, two like, months? it was it was two months so i went wow. to university i started when in what september yeah and yeah. she passed away in november november wow so she got to see me in university and i remember man she would call me every day and i'd be like oh like, i know she's missing me and i used to say to her, i know mm. you're missing me mom like but no i'm just seeing how, how you're getting on you know <laughs> so but you know we you know our mom loved us so much and we never ever doubted that you understand no, what no, i'm saying and never 
even though she wasn't like the most affectionate mum, but her love was strong. Yeah. You know, and, and um, yeah, like I said, I think about that day every day, you know, of I've, I'd just come back from work. Yeah, I was working at mm. Orange at the time and I saw my mum and she was in the sitting room and she, I don't know, there was just something, it was a weirdness, man. You know, and I remember I came into the sitting room and she just looked so sad. Mm. You know, it's like she knew something, you know, and and I don't normally do this, but I remember I came out from work, I saw her and I went in to the room and I just hugged her. Yeah, yeah. And and you know that that just wasn't something. Yeah, yeah. Because as you're saying, we, yeah. we didn't really grow up like yeah, that. Yeah, I'm yeah. More instilled tough love. But something in my yeah. soul said, go and hug your mom. And I hugged her mm. and I told her I love her, you know. And I remember she looked at me and she was like, Oh, what's that for? And I was like, Mum, I'm just hugging you. I'm just telling you I love you, you know. And um, you know, I'm so happy that that was my last memory. Yeah, right? man. Like, because yeah. I don't know how I would have been able to live with myself knowing that our last interaction was was a bad one, you know. Mm -hmm. And I can I can be safe in living in my life and going to my grave knowing that my last interaction was hugging my mother yeah. and telling her I love her and that has given me so much peace, you know, and uh, even though it's been hard, I can always go back to that moment and be like, my mum passed on knowing that, you know what, my sons are ready. Yeah. You know? No, definitely, man. Yeah. And um, it's crazy because obviously I was in the house living mm -hmm. with our mum at the time when you was up in uni. Yeah. And um, she had reconciled with a lot of friends and family members that week before she passed. I remember, yeah. And it was just like one of the... It's like she knew, it's like things. she knew she was going. Yeah. Yeah, and she was, you know, my, our mum was very spiritual. She was, if people think we're spiritual, that's where mm. we got it from. She mm. was a Rasta woman, but not just a Rasta woman. She was intergalactic, yeah. spiritual. Like, intergalactic. this woman was doing Reiki from day, yep. teaching us to meditate from five years old, like... My mum was a different type of woman. And, and then on top of that as yeah. well, she was also like in the digital world. Like yeah. My yeah. mum was the first person that I knew that ever was on like... The internet. Digi yeah, digital radio. Yeah, digital radio. She had a radio show. YouTube, yeah. all of this. Like she knew about all of the all technology of before it licked and bust. Because I remember I was on pirate radio at the time. And um, I remember my mum kept saying... Uh, you need to uh, jump on internet radio. And I was like, mom, that's never going to take off. What do, you, what do you mean? It's all about pirate. And she was like, Josh, pirate radio is going to die. Yeah. You need to jump yeah, on yeah, yeah, internet yeah. radio. Listen, about a year later, pirate radio was out of here, mate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, but, she, um, was, she, was, she was a remarkable woman, man. And, she um, was. And like, to, 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 to touch on um, your story, um, with the last time that you saw my mum. Mm -hmm. um, same thing with me, you know, I was I was at home, I, we was in the front room and our mum, she was just, she was just, she just had enough, man. Mm. She just had enough that day, man. And, and I remember she, she turned she to me enough. and she was like, like, uh, Josh, like, I had enough of, I just had enough. And I said, mum, don't say that. I said, mum, mm. don't say that. Mm. You know, because I know words are powerful, yeah. you know, and... Um, well, she taught us that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and just to... Just to give people a bit of a backstory, um, our mother was in love with a man who was murdered in in nineteen ninety eight, and that man was like a, a stepfather to he us. Was a father. You know? He was a father to us because we lived with him yeah. in Dominica. You know, we're we're, we're half Dominican and half Jamaican. She and dragged lived, us out to Dominica. Yeah, she told us we're going for six weeks. She dragged us out of school. <laughs> <laughs> like a day before we was meant to yeah. fly back, yeah, we just didn't go back. We didn't go back. And we became <laughs> we became village boys. Yes, living in a wooden <laughs> shack with, with, with the rusters in the hills. Like you know, what I'm saying this yeah. is this is real stuff. You know, the best, and the best, the best thing in my life, the best thing in our 100%. life, was living in the Caribbean. One hundred percent, and that was down to her. We went to school in the Caribbean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and, Twice. Uh, and, and yeah. this man that our mum, our mum took in. Mm. Sorry, that that took in our mum. He loved us like we was his yes, children. Yes, yes. You know? He always used to tell our mum that he loves us more than he loves her. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, he's like, I love you so much that I'm going to tell you that I love your children more because yeah. I know how much you love your children. Exactly. And exactly. I have never seen my mum that happy in, in ever. 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 And when you he know? was taken away at such a young age and he was murdered 
and um but i was living with him yeah he was i was, out, he was i was still was in living. dominica yeah, i yeah. was about to go to secondary school in dominica yeah. and mm-hmm. our mum had flown with you back to england to sort out some stuff and get make some money and stuff and mm-hmm. i was out there with him when yeah that happened yeah. you know yeah. yeah and again it was uh, the same crazy story where i was gonna go and stay with some family members mm-hmm. and um i was on the bus and and um takuma his name was he was like, oh, give me five minutes. I'm, I'm going to come back. And um, the bus man wouldn't wait. So he, and I was like, no, wait, 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 wait. You know, my, 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 my stepdad's coming back. Yeah. The bus man, no, we got to go. The bus is packed. And then, and then the bus went and I never got to see him again. And yeah. two weeks later, you know, had the story. He, he was yeah, murdered. He was murdered. You know? murdered. And I was 12 years old in Dominica crazy, by man. myself. You know, crazy, crazy. I, story. And you know what's so crazy about that is I never thought our mom was co- coming coming to get me. Like I just because all the family were like, right, we got to put him in school. We got to keep him. You know what Caribbean families yeah, are like? They will yeah. take you in. Like the mm-hmm. village raises the child. You know. Mm-hmm. And I remember like a week later, I just saw our mom come off the bus and she was just in tears and and. Oh man, bro! Yeah. Like I, man, I was twelve years old. 12, that's, that's the first death traumatic. you ever really dealt with, right? That's the first, that's the death, first death in your death. life. Yeah, 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 yeah. First death, yeah. Yeah, and and the, and it's just the type of death and the circumstances that was around it was probably the worst type of death that could, if, bro, that it could fu- happen. It, it, you know, it, it fucked me, bro. Yeah, for like, years, man. Like I've been yeah. dealing with not just the death of my mum, but the death of a man that was my father, Takuma, at the same time. Yeah, and yeah. and. Yeah, bro. Like this, this stuff is 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 deep stuff, and that's why I think it's great to talk about this stuff. Of and, course, and obviously course. we're gonna get to like how we've dealt with it and stuff. But definitely just giving the backstory and also tell, also speak on when Takuma died, the anxiety that built in us of knowing that our mom was gonna die after that. Yeah. So yeah, I, I shouldn't yeah. say die. You know, I hate yeah, that part, word. Like, I hate transcend, die. Past. transcend. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Cause no one and nothing ever dies, you know. We live on forever, you know. It's crazy because, like, I just kind of compared flying out and going to another country with death. Mm. And for years, I would never go on holidays because subconsciously in my mind, flying out led to death. Yeah. It, every time I went to another country, somebody's going to die. So I didn't start traveling until I was, like, 24, <laughs> 25. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, because... I really had yeah it, 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 it really fucked with my psychology my mind it, it fucked with me and uh, PTSD they, they call it right and um, yeah man it's, it's the reason why I, I, I wanted to bring up that story was to tie it back in to basically say our mum went through that and she was how old was she at the time 32, 33 she was well, 1998 yeah. she was 34 she was my age she was 34 she was your age she now. lost the, like she lost you know Pretty much, you probably was gonna marry. They're probably gonna marry. Oh, one, you know? one hundred. Like they, they were setting life together. One hundred percent. They they had a long distance relationship for four years. Yeah. And our mum took her two kids out to Dominica mm-hmm. to go and, and 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 set a new life. You know. Yeah. And it was just ripped apart. And I've never seen my mum that broken. And I don't think that she ever healed from that. See, this is what I was about to tie it to because she was um when he was taken away when Takuma was taken away, um she never really healed. And that's why I said when I was sitting in the front room the day that she passed and she was like, she's just had enough. Mm. It was all to do with that because she was trying to move on and but the thing uh, she, find other relationships. But she, her heart was yeah. still in love with him. She felt she felt betrayed, I think. Yeah, yeah. By yeah. not just, you know, everything she was going through with like family members and friends, but kind of betrayed by life, you know, because she had finally found love again and it had got taken from her, and, yeah. and and you know she didn't like to be in England, you know. So we're gonna get we're gonna get to also what she passed from and how she passed. But obviously, we want to give um, like a backstory and um, let's let's speak on. All right, so the thing about her mom, like I said, she was really different, right? She, which was really different, and I think in a way it was a really good thing, and maybe parents should do this. From a young age, our, our mother always prepared us that she was going to die early. And when I told people that, they always like, whoa, that's crazy. But I think probably that is the single, one of the biggest single most reasons why we are thriving today. And we and Definitely. we didn't lose our minds and go crazy because it 
yes, it, it hit and we didn't know when it was going to hit and it was instant. But from a young age, she would always tell us, I'm not going to be here forever. Yep. And you lot got to be able to know what to do for yourselves as men. Yeah. Take responsibility for your life because I ain't going to be here to do it for you. And she would prepare us. She would tell us. So when she died, it almost was like, when she transcended, it almost was like, we just knew exactly what to do. But I tell you what, what was painful and traumatic in the times leading up from when Takuma died in 98 to when her mom died in, in, in 1990, it's 2006, was the anxiety mm. of our mom ain't coming back home today. Like we had to live with that from the age of 12 to 20. Every single day, my Every mom day. would fly. My mom would go even to the shop. The, I always had this feeling that this is the day she's not going to come back mm. for eight years. You know, and dealing with that, that, that sent me into spiral, I think. I think like in my teenage years, I was messed up, man. Do you know what I mean? No, definitely. Yeah, <laughs> you know, because I think literally that was, that was my start of, that was the start of anxiety for me, you know. And I don't blame her, but, but, but definitely where it, it helped us and it benefited us in later life of actually dealing with her death, but in the time of the death, the anxiety that built up inside of me is something I'm still dealing with today. Yeah. This impending yep. sense of doom that bad things are going to happen. <laughs> especially when you travel. Yeah, well, yeah. Yeah. Especially when you travel because, you know, people can leave and not come back. And that's the reality of it. And in one, in one hand where I'm like so happy that she prepared us for our de her death, but in the same way, when I look back on how I used to feel and how scared I was and, 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 and how scared you was and how scared we was that it could be the day to day is mm. something you sort of carry for the rest of your life. Yeah, you know? I remember. And, and it makes you afraid to create attachments. And, mm. and, and that has been my thing is like, as much as I want attachments and connections at the same time, I go into attachments and connections with that. F is, I guess it's abandonment issues, right? Yeah, you feel like you're gonna be left I feel like I'm gonna be left, you know, with everything, like mm. with people. And it's like, I think in my life, it's made me kind of hold people at a distance and kind of let them in, but not truly let them yep. in because I've yep. all, in my mind, any kind of relationship I engage with, I always, in my mind, feel like, whether it's friends, whether it's girlfriends, whatever, like I always feel like this is, this is gonna end. And I think that came from really young and just expecting my mother to go. I never come back again. And so it's like, in anything I go into, I'm always ready and prepared. I'm ready and prepared for the outcome. Like, you can't catch me off guard with anything, bro. It could be a <laughs> show. It could be it could be going to the shop. It could be anything. I am prepared. And especially where we grew up, mm. how we grew up and where yeah. we grew up in the area we grew yeah. up. You had to be prepared So many of our time. friends, yeah. that they just died. Oh, you know, understand man. what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like that. Like, I don't fear death, right? Mm. I fear not living. Mm, and mm. and I think that's more scarier, like being alive and not living. Yeah, not living your life to the uh, truest potential, yeah. your fullest potential. And, and so that's why your dreams. Yeah. For me, there's this great um, speaker her name's called Brene Brown, right? Dr. Brene Brown, and she's yeah. done a few TED talks, and she talks about. It's called what she call it. She calls it um, rehearsing tragedy. Yes. So rehearsing tragedy is when you're so prepared for things to go wrong that you rehearse all the reasons mm. how it can go mm. wrong and how it's going to go wrong because you think that it's going to stop you it from happening. Yeah. But yeah. it doesn't stop it from happening. That actually kind of makes it happen. Mm. But in your mind, you're like, well, if it happens, I'm ready, I'm fully prepared. So you don't give your all to things because you think things are going to end. You know, and, 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 and I feel like that is definitely linked to losing two people that I loved deeply so it's now i'm just like kind of just prepared to just lose everything so it just kind of in a way it makes me go even harder at things and 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 stay within that survival mode it's because you like you mm. is it because you know that there is an end to this there's an end to everything yeah well i feel like maybe a lot of people that's never really experienced death to, with somebody so close yeah you don't understand that there's an end well you i guess you understand there's an end yeah. but you don't think about it you don't think about it because you're not yeah. prepared for it yeah. and where mm. our mum prepared us that 
she's not going to be here forever. She gave us all the, the tools and the skills to be able to thrive on our own. So yep. our mom gave us survival skills mm -hmm. in life and also when she passed. And, yep. and it got us deeply into survival mode. So we are like the greatest survivors you can find. <laughs> we have survived so many things yeah. and, and not just surviving, but we had to learn to take that surviving and make it thriving. Mm. And, 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 and that is, I think that's the deep lesson in this because that survival mode, yeah, our mom planted a seed of survival in us, but what happens is when you live in that survival mode so much, it turns against you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you start to, you start to don't even go for what really you think you should go for. You just, you're just good with anything. You become mm. a savage, mm. like caveman mentality. Like you're, ba you're back in the jungle and you're just savage mode. And, and, and that survival can turn against you, man. And it, and it can make you, oh man, like it, 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 it can make you or it can break you. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I've been broken and you've been broken mm. many, many times. And yep. And out of that broken, the pieces, when you put it back together, that resilience that you have really prepares you for the mission and for the life that we're going to live. And, and, and that's things that I sound like my mum did. <laughs> <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> but it's like, yeah, man, survival mode, you know? Yeah, survival mode. Yeah, man. yeah so, you know, people are probably watching they're probably thinking okay cool what did your mum pass away from so um, let's just tell the story like this is real yeah, talk in it so let's yeah. just tell it real talk in it yeah 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 okay so basically don't rush it tell the story real we'll, talk we tell, we, yeah we this is, we got all the time in the world <laughs> so um yeah basically our mum was in a relationship with um a guy that was from dominica Un unrequited unrequited love so a yeah, relationship yeah. where you put in more and you kind of are more invested yes, in the relationship yes, yeah. than the other person yeah is. and that's what she was in yeah yeah she was more invested in the relationship and um she never really knew where she stood in the relationship you know even though we always used to tell her tell her man mom this man is some joke man like, we joke, did not man. like him like <laughs> we didn't feel it we thought he was I want to tell you he was rinsing him right upstairs and you thought he <laughs> well yeah you well, thought you couldn't hear <laughs> well our mum brought him to to England and, and, and you know he was here and we was like why is he here you know and, 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 and the guy came to England because our mum wanted to build him up and you know give him a better life and help yeah. him out but this guy he bought his CV in the suitcase so then custom saw it <laughs> and they were like you trying to work here and uh, that was obviously done uh, and dusted so their relationship Became a long distance. Yeah, we border force rule number one. Don't <laughs> yeah. put your CV in a suitcase. Don't plan. put your CV in a suitcase. You know what I'm saying? They got USB sticks these days. I mean, don't go anywhere if you're like trying to like live there illegally. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I just got to <laughs> say that for the camera. Get innit? your visa. But but Get my mum was gonna do it the right way. But you know, that's what happened. So yeah, he was he came here, mm, <laughs> mm. and then he had to go back. So then their relationship became one where he's in the Caribbean and our mum's here. Yeah. So he had um. He he had to go back, and then at some point his mom passed away, and um, basically before his mom had passed away, our mother had flew out to go see him in Dominica, and she got back to England. But well, remember, she had she had come just come back from the Caribbean two weeks before. So yeah, that's what I was she saying. took a yeah she took yeah, a yeah, lot yeah, of yeah, flights she, within yeah. a short space of time. Yeah. So yeah, so she went to go see him in in, in Dominica. Then she had come back to England. His mom had passed away and then she wanted to be there for him for the funeral. So she flew back within a space of, I don't probably under two weeks, to be honest with you. It could have even been a week and she flew back there. Um, she was there for his mother's funeral and then she came back to England. Now, if you're taking a lot of flights, what a lot of people don't know, if you're taking a lot of flights, long haul flights, yeah. it's always good to take an aspirin after a flight because your blood starts to get clotty so you get up and walk yeah and, and it loosens your blood and stuff and especially yeah. for for black people and black women yeah in particular yeah the, the, the risks are a lot higher you know? yes yes yeah yes so yeah but the education wasn't there no no we do, no so people we, don't know about no. it there's probably people watching this now that are like 
Oh, really? I didn't know about that. Yep. But the yep. risks are high when you're taking long haul flights. Yep. You gotta make sure that your 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 blood is moving. Yep. You, you know? gotta make sure your blood's circulating. And um, yeah, so she flew back to um, England, and she she was like, I don't know, she just was tired and. Mm-hmm. Well, remember she had the energy. She had a car accident five years ago where she lost a lot of blood and became yeah. anemic. Yeah, so she was anemic. So yeah. she probably thought that was something to do with that. Mm-hmm. And then I remember she had booked a hospital appointment on a. Fr- so it was, it was Friday, Monday. and the hospital appointment was, was going to be for Monday. Monday for all of us. Yeah, for all of us to go. So and she get checked you out. in, her yeah. in, and me in. Yeah, on the Monday. On the Monday, and um. Saturday night she passed. Saturday. She transcended. Yeah. You know? Two days before we was about to go to the doctors. Yep. Two days before we was about to go to the doctors. Yeah. So which was which was just It was crazy. Yeah. It's (laughs) crazy. Like I I remember on that week she said, Right. This is what I'm saying. Her intuition was so strong, you know, that's where we get it from. Like her intuition was like, you know what? I need to book us all in. And she registered us in in a, in a new doctor's and she's like, right, we're all going for checkups on Monday. Yeah, yeah. So he was like, okay. We was like, why? But she was like, no, we're all going for checkups on Monday. And um, on the Saturday she passed. And do you remember when we went um, to the doctor's on Monday and we told, you know, we was in, obviously we was in bits, like mm-hmm. literally mm-hmm. in bits, you know. Mm-hmm. And the doctor said to us what she passed away from if she had just took a simple aspirin, mm. it could have saved her life. Yep. An aspirin. An aspirin. That you can get for 20 pence, you know. Yeah. So she died two days before that. So if we, she, you know, yeah, it's, yeah. it's oh, even that, like just talking about yeah, it now, it's, it's, like it's, my it's, mind is just like, you know, but you know, everything mm. happens for a reason. Of course. And um, so, so yeah, and the Saturday she passed was, was fireworks day do you remember that yes i remember that so it's like clear yeah obviously you know so you know she's gone now to to go meet a friend in crystal palace and an hour later we get a phone call and you know it's that phone call that we've been dreading our whole lives (laughs) yeah (laughs) that you never fully prepared for and and so we're on the way driving up to i I remember before when you called me yeah and told me yeah yeah, uh, i think you said you're coming to get me or yeah 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 and um, as soon as you told me yeah. our mum was in the hospital, I had, you uh, knew, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You I, knew I it, was the day. it was the day to you yeah, knew it was I had the felt day, it yeah. because I remember that day when our mum left, mm. I was off. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And 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 and, and, and I remember our, our, our cousin Marcel he, when he was in the house. Mm. I just left him downstairs. It I was a weird day. Yeah, yeah, yeah day. I went upstairs, yeah. man, because my head was I had a mad yeah. headache and my energy. I was just off. And on the way yeah. driving. So I get you now, and on the way driving up to the to the hospital in Crane, yeah. there's just loads of fireworks going off. Bow, bow, yeah, bow. Yeah, and me yeah. and you were not saying nothing because ah. we both know. We both know. Yeah. And the fireworks are going off. Bow, bow, bow. It was like the most. Ah oh man, like it was the most. It, it was cinematic in a way. Mm. But we just knew, you know. And of course, yeah, you know. Yeah, got to the hospital now, and obviously, you know, we know the, the news now, and it was almost like man was in a dream. Yeah, it was a dream state. It was definitely it was, it literally went state. into a dream state. It was definitely a dream state, and you know, like after she passed and coming back here and stuff, and having to go back to college or going back to uni, <laughs> uni and stuff. You know, there's one thing when somebody passes, what people never really tell you, and I think it's good that we're doing this podcast to tell people this in this episode is the roller coaster of emotions is crazy yeah you know a lot of people will tell you you know you're just sad all the time mm. but the truth is you got super highs in yeah, that time as well super highs there was times we were so yeah excited and stuck like no no she's gone no. to a better place yeah she's, yeah and we just you know, knew it was like yeah, no yeah. and and i told <laughs> i tell you what as well what was i know crazy for family members is we kind of was just doing music we were still doing music and we yeah, were still laughing. Yeah. We were still, and people were like, wait, hold on. You're supposed to be crying and sad. We had those times, but I I know our mom and our mom would want us to not cry one all the time. Right. And want us to continue and go on in her words, 
you have to complete the mission. And that's all we was hearing around that time is you have to complete the mission. You understand? So we had moments where we was just chilling and, and you know, hosting people. And we had moments where on the nine night where people would come and for the whole day they just wouldn't see us, we'd just be upstairs. Yeah. Because, yeah. Because, because you can't, it, what a lot of people do when they, when they lose a parent is they try to suppress those emotions. And when you suppress those emotions, those emotions eat at you from the inside. You understand? It tears you apart, eats at you from the inside and it comes out later on in life and you kind of like pass that on to other people or pass that on to your own children. And I feel like we were at that time going through the the emotions of allowing the lows to be low, but allowing the highs to be high. Because our mum always says she wants her life to be a celebration. And that's why at her funeral, we didn't even have a funeral. So we had a celebration of life for our mum here where, where we had Rastafarian drummers mm. beating drums and singing and we made everybody dress in colours and white. Exactly what she would have wanted. Exactly what she would have wanted. And then we got her body sent over to Dominica and buried in the country that she loved. She always told us when we was kids, when she passes, send her body to Dominica. To Dominica. And you know, that might be sound crazy to a few people here. And why would someone told their children at a young yeah. age that but the truth is she loved that country yeah and the <laughs> truth is you have to you have to tell your kids these things because she you know eventually us, eventually exactly you got to prepare them for things like this because things like this do happen and um yeah man it's what what are the hardest one of the hardest things for me and it's another thing that no one really talks about mm. is never calling somebody mom again that's deep that's deep yeah I've never thought about that but that's deep it's to, even to this day you, but I think, you never get over that but I think that's where we speak about our mum so much we speak about our mum every day you know like there's still gifts that we're still receiving from our mum like material gifts even like books yeah. that my mum gave me at 11 years old and I'm finding it on and, and um, you know mini discs of her radio shows you know yeah. what I'm saying she's got to, I found 10 mini disc of our radio shows and we can always go back and listen to our mum's voice like she's she's still giving us gifts from today from still dropping dreams stuff in the do- in dominica and the caribbean and just little things that comes into our mind whether it's spiritually or conversations we have and we remember it and discovering her writing and all these things mm-hmm. like she's still here with us today and i feel like that is one of the key components of dealing with a parent of understanding that they don't go anywhere they become a part of you yep you know yep. and, 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 and I feel like you know in the early days that was hard because I, 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 I was the type of person that I never wanted to feel like people were feeling sorry for me yeah me so too, me I, too. I, 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 I stayed in uni I didn't drop out of uni that first year I was living you, you was here I was living um, on halls and I would come back here like every yeah. weekend or whatever mm-hmm. and I was still doing uni bro mm-hmm. I didn't drop out no, and no. I stayed all the way to the end because mm-hmm. I knew that my mum's dream was for me to complete my uni. I went, I, I, I complete my degree. I went to uni and I did music, commercial music, right? And I graduated with a 2-1 because yeah. I was like, that's not even for me, that's for my mum. Because I showed her and I showed everybody and I showed myself that I could go through the worst thing that could happen to somebody. Yeah. But still complete the mission still complete it man and I want to show yeah. and I want anybody that's watching this right now to know that as, as hard as it is to lose appearance and as traumatising as mm-hmm. hard it is mm-hmm. don't do it alone no you don't have to we had so many people around us I was yep. in a relationship and yep. she supported me so much and you supported you and mm-hmm. friends and family and everyone was, a, was around us you know and you can't do it alone but don't suppress how you feel you have yeah. to lay it out you have to you have, you, to. You, you have, you have to lay it out man and um yeah, yeah, man, like, yeah, like, how, how have you found it, like, you know, with how you dealt with it when you were younger? Yeah. To how you deal with it now, like, what what kind of changed for you? When I was younger, I thought that it would be a feeling, the fe- that feeling of loss, mm. I thought it would only be temporary for ooh, ooh. a year or two. That's deep. The truth is, you never stop feeling that feeling of loss yeah you actually learn to live with it like, you know when you just random yeah. moments bro like random moments i'll be driving to work and i'm just 
bust out crying in my yeah, car yeah, into yeah, tears. Yeah. Like I was just thinking of my mum and I was through the emotions and boom. Yeah. And yeah. then I have, to, I have to turn the car back and go back home, bro. Yeah, yeah that's real. <laughs> and allow myself to feel those feelings, mm-hmm, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, and it's just, um, yeah. you learn to live with it mm-hmm. and you, in a way you turn it into a strength what you was talking about yeah. the other day as well it's a strength now if you, if you touch on that quickly so it's like the strength of it is is now like I said like they don't die we're like we're so conditioned to use those words die it's like I talk about my mum all the time right so when I, I meet anybody and they'll ask me questions and I'll be like yeah my mum passed away and first of all the feelings of you know it's that thing of and I've always hated this, but I understand why people do it. It's because if somebody tells you their parent died, yeah, the first thing you're going to think of, you don't want to lose your parent. Yeah, right? yeah that's the first thing that comes <laughs> so to mind. So the first thing is everybody says, oh, I'm so sorry. And for me, I've got to like, sometimes I've trolled people, but I've got to learn to just accept it. Sometimes I'll be like, yo, it's not a sad thing. It's a mm. beautiful thing. Mm. Like my mom is now part of me in my life right now, but I've got to, sort of kind of have compassion and just kind of be like, oh yeah, thank you. But sometimes I went through stages where I'm like, don't be sorry, man. It's the best thing that ever happened to me. Yeah. And people didn't know how to deal with that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But, but, but that's how I felt. I felt like not my mom passing. Obviously it was sad, but her not, not having to see her suffer, man. Yeah. And, and, and life was hard for her. And I know that wherever she is right now, because she comes in my dreams all the time, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. she's always happy, man. Yeah. When she's out there and doing yeah. what she's doing. And and um, so when I say it was the best thing that happened to me, like I feel like I gained an angel. Definitely, I agree. And you gained an angel. Yeah. And there's so many things in my life that I went through and in our lives that we went through where we know we should not survive that. Nah. There was a feeling. Sometimes it's like, don't do this today. Mm, do that mm, today. Or, yeah, yeah. You know, I always know my mom's voice because I might be doing something I shouldn't be doing and I'll just hear a voice in my head and it's her voice. Yeah, man. I didn't raise my sons to be dependent on, on no one. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, whoa, 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 yeah, 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 whoa, whoa. Yeah. Everything's getting just, ripped yeah. up. Everything's yeah, yeah, getting yeah. smashed. Everything's getting <laughs> stopped. People are getting locked. No, 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 no. Wait, what? No, okay. You know what I mean? You know, so <laughs> it becomes a strength when you allow that person to merge with you. Yeah, yeah. And also forgive that person. Because for, for a long time, I felt like, man, this is going to be deep. But I felt like I was angry with my mom. Yeah, man. Yeah. I was angry because yeah, I felt yeah, like man. she left us. Mm. Mm. I felt like, I felt like Ra Takuma left us. Mm. My mom, you left us. Yeah. You know, and, and, and. For, for a lot of years, I, I used to block her out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Where people would sometimes stop me or come come to me and just tell me, and just talk about my mum, or your mum wants you to know this. And I'd be like, bro, I've only known this person for a week and they're telling me things yeah, about yeah. my mum. Yeah, you really <laughs> mean messages, man. Yeah, and man. I had to yeah. learn to, to deal with that anger, you know. Yeah, of, yeah. Because I feel like when people die mm-hmm. and people have that mourning period, right, mm-hmm. and, that, and that anger and that thing you go through, I haven't experienced it. I feel like that mourning period and that sadness, it's not sadness tr- just because that person has gone, mm. but sadness that you felt left behind. Yeah. Because you yeah. know that person's in a good place and you've left me here. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, no, nah, I could definitely relate. See, that's part of the <sighs> the, the uh, roller coaster of emotions. Deep. There's anger, there's yeah. sadness, there's and you can't mad suppress intense that happiness. Anger there's just so. There's so many things, you know, and um, the thing is, yeah, you know, you learn, you learn to live with it. I don't, it doesn't trouble me as much as it used to going through all of these um, cycles of uh, emotional roller coasters. What I found is, is when I speak about it and I have open dialect and I don't try to suppress the feeling that I'm feeling no. at the time. Don't suppress it. Don't suppress it. Talk Just about go through it. the stages. And talk about yeah. it. Yeah, like I said in in the podcast before, you can't go through nothing here alone, and yeah. and that is how we we die inside before we die physically yeah. because we try to go through these feelings alone. Yeah, we have to talk about these things. Uh, we really do. We have to. If it's either you seek therapy or 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 you have friends or family or you make podcasts, you know, you have to talk about these things because that is part of the dealing and the mm-hmm. part of the healing with mm-hmm. it. You know, to be able to express exactly how you feel. You know, and don't suppress those feelings. And um, yeah, like for me, man, like, you know, 
I've never felt more connected to my mum. And in a way, I feel more connected to my mum in the spiritual realm <laughs> yeah. than sometimes when she was here because mm. life is hard. Yeah, yeah, and and, yeah. and our mum was an incredible mother, so loving. She gave mm-hmm. us everything we wanted. Everything we wanted. Physically, spiritually, yeah. everything, man. Like yeah. our mum, we didn't have to want for nothing. Nah, you nah. know. And um, she was just such a loving person, and and um, but it was hard for her because she there was nobody like her. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So she dealt with a lot of pain and a lot of rejection. Yeah, yeah. By herself, mm-hmm. and and a lot of her family and friends didn't see it, but we saw it. And mm-hmm. and seeing your mum in that type of situation it's it's hard and sometimes you know it's not her fault but being a single mother raising two boys sometimes that 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 two very boisterous boys just boys (laughs) just intelligent boys as well that would challenge you our mom's game had to be shot because there were two of us because when our mom left we had a screwdriver we was opening up everything in the house because we want to see how things work (laughs) we was (laughs) we was them kids we're opening speaker boxes she was angry with us but then she was secretly happy that (laughs) yeah they're learning how things work you know because our mom was the type of person she would take part of a computer take a computer apart and could Build a computer back Yeah, from scratch. Again. My mum taught me how to build computers. Yeah. I just to throw that out. That might sound crazy to a lot of people, yeah? yeah. Especially people that are over the age of like 25. My mum taught me how to build computers. Uh-huh. Do you know what I'm saying? So, from a young age, we've always been interested in, in, in dissecting how things work. Yeah. Right? So, so, when she was angry with us, she wasn't really angry with us. No, nah, she wasn't. She was, she was kind of like, yeah. Yeah. But, you, but like I said, <laughs> People are humans and people are alive, and sometimes you know you're vexed. Remember when she bought us that chemistry set? <laughs> the chemistry set, of course. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, you know. So it's like, so we yeah, can mix chemicals. And yeah, and de- <laughs> stop opening up her things. Stop opening up the speaker yeah, box hey, and the yeah, TV. Yeah. That. Here, you, here you go. Here's a chemistry set. Yeah. <laughs> we soon got bored of that when we realized that we can't make things explode. So <laughs> you know, and um, that was the first thing we was trying to do. It <laughs> literally. Yeah. So it's like, oh man. You know, yeah, it's like, and, and also dealing with the death of a parent is understanding that even though they did their best, they did the best they could. And sometimes the best they could from a child's perspective is is, is, is seen as unfair. <laughs> so there was, you know, there was like things when a parent dies is that obviously you kind of mortalize them and you kind of put them on a pedestal, but you don't really, like you've kind of suppressed the parts of when they were alive that, you conflicted with them and, and that's a hard thing to deal with of knowing that you still kind of have memories or, or, or feelings even though they did the best they were the best they could do sometimes you know people had bad days and you clashed and your parents sometimes want different things for you than you want for yourself at that age because we were teenagers we we never got to the point of being adults and having that adult relationship with our mom so sometimes we had clashing relationship and you know it only I, I say that you have to forgive your parents but for me forgiving your parent when there's no longer here is, is is probably the hardest thing you can do but when you actually can do it I think that makes you find solace solace bro Man. that makes you a deeply compassionate person 100 yeah and um, I think right now in the back we need to put some Naya Bingi rosters playing some drums. Yes. Boom. Yes. Let's let's also put because as much as our mum loved Dominica, yeah. So we have yeah. to put Dominica here. Let's put Dominica here. Boom. And it's not Dominican Republic, guys. This is Dominica, yeah. Commonwealth, Commonwealth. of Dominica, yeah. The Nature yes. Island. Nature Island. So, so yeah, man, like, I feel like we touched on a lot there. We did, we did. Was there anything we, did. we didn't touch on? Um, I'm trying to think. Is there anything we oh. didn't touch on? Yeah. Mother's days were used to be really hard. Oh, man. <laughs> Mother's Day. Yeah, Mother's Day. I love Mother's Days now, though. I do now. Because I love to, I love to see people honouring their mothers. It, yes. It makes me feel good now. But yeah, back in the yeah. day, it was hard. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, but um, yeah, and um, anybody watching this right now that hasn't lost a parent, what I would say is, tell your parent you love them, man, and forgive your parents. They did the best they could do. Their childhood probably was bad. Like, mm-hmm. let's be honest, you know, and they probably got a, you know 
abused or mentally, physically or whatever, you know, mm. we go through as children. And I feel like even though some of our parents could have done better, they've done the best they could do with what yes. they went through, you know. And a lot, of us had, a lot of them had us young. So I would say to anyone that hasn't lost a parent, work on trying to forgive your parent before it's too late because you're going to regret it. Definitely. You know, and um, if it's even you watching this right now, uh, go tell your mum or your dad, tell them you love them, yep. give them a hug and just let them know that you forgive them. And yeah, man, I feel Definitely. like it's so important. Yeah. And then one of these episodes soon, man, we probably bring our dad on here. Oh, wow. Yeah. That would be quite <laughs> something, right? Wouldn't that be an amazing episode? Yeah. yeah. Listen, dad, if you're watching this, you need to come on this because we need, to, we need to have a real talk here as well as, as, as you know. As men. That would be an yeah. amazing episode. It would, but, um, it really would be. Dealing with the death of a parent. Love. Love. You, know, you can go two ways. You can go the dark way or you can go the light way and... um. If you choose to go the light way, then forgiveness, compassion, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. loving and allowing yourself to express how you're feeling and mm -hmm. having a support group around you is going to help you. Um, if you choose to go the dark way, then... Um, More power to you. Yeah. And um, on that <laughs> note... Been real talk with Ruins A Sun. This has Jay been Flames. a great episode. I'm this really is, happy yeah. we did this. Yeah, yeah. me too. Me too. And, and um, yeah, anyone that's lost a parent and they're struggling, you know, reach out. You know, we're here to reach out and um, get support. Yeah, and if you've got any great advice, leave it in the comments. Yeah. Subscribe, hit the notification bell. It's real talk with Ruins A Sun and Jay Flames. Yeah. Blessings. Thank you, Mum. Thank you for everything. Thank you. Bro. Love. That was a good episode. It was, it was, yeah, it was, I'm, it was, I'm happy so we did that. I'm, I'm surprised you didn't shed a tear, though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next time, Rob. Yeah. Next time, Rob. Oh, you're just you know, trying to put on it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but uh, man, I'm happy we did that, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, big yeah. up, man. Yeah, man. Bless. Well, we've been bless. through a lot, man, but we're still here and we're nah. still going, bro. Trust me. Yeah. Trust me, man. Yeah, big yeah, up, bro. Big up, nah. man. I'm happy we did that. Wow. Yeah.